Hi, I'm Kevin with Rock Ridge Windmills and uh, I ask you to join me today. We're going to go take a look. We're going on a neat project here, working on the William Isaac Tustin windmill. Now Tustin came to California, he was out here before the gold rush, a pioneer inventor and made the first windmill in California. Fascinating character, fascinating story. We're making a Tustin windmill. Now, we're going to give you a little bit of information today about finding the right wood for the right application when you do a historically correct windmill. Now, this is a piece of oak. It's just fantastic. It's solid, great wood. It makes a great wheel arm, several structural components of a windmill. It's not so good for using as a blades. Now, up here we have some uh, swamp cypress, we call it. comes out of Louisiana. It's air dried. We select this. We buy a whole lot of lumber to find really good stuff. We mill it down to individual pieces to get what we want for the correct application. Now we're on a real tough project. We're doing the 1870 historically correct windmill that was installed here in California. So we're hunting for old growth redwood. Now that's going to be hard to find. Original, clear, heart, beautiful, old growth redwood. So join Ray and I. We're going to go out and we're going to see what we can find for clear heart redwood. This ought to be a real adventure. Ray's got some good ideas. He knows a lot of people. So join us. We're going to go out and see what Ray's found for us. So we're at the lumber mill. This is the mill they saw redwood. So you can see behind me here, these are the redwood logs and then the lumber that's been processed through here. So we're going to go inside the mill. We're looking around. We're trying to find the perfect redwood for our 1870 Tustin windmill restoration project. Um, this is the only way you're going to find this stuff. You just don't go up on the phone and ask for it. Everyone will give you the standard answer. They don't have it. You have to go dig. You have to work to find this stuff. But we're looking for the perfect wood that would be used in 1870 when William Isaac Tustin built this windmill. This is an exciting part. This is a lot of fun. Okay, so we're here in Northern California. We're what we like to say behind the Redwood Curtain. We're 100 miles or greater away from San Francisco and we're here at a family owned lumber mill. This is the third generation of this family that's had this mill. It's just neat. And here in the office, it's a classic old thing. Look at these old pictures. This is really neat. Horse drawn, bringing these giant Redwood stumps, guys with their axes here chain driven going across a log trestle boy you'd never get that past all the government officials today it's really neat here's a picture of the mill in 1960 with the tp going log out there the tp burner that's sort of a landmark out here you want to see and of course we've got the local coffee pot so you can come in here on a rainy day have a cup of coffee buy a little bit of lumber neat place to be so let's go out and see what we can find in the yard we're out here at the old sawmill this is a tp burner behind me Looks like a TP. This is where all the old chips and sawdust, the waste wood would go away. Lumber like this redwood in the old days, it wasn't long enough. It wasn't eight feet or longer. It just went into the TP burner. They burned it up. Really sad. Nice thing is they don't use TP burners anymore. So we're going to take a walk around the old sawmill here. We're looking for old redwood, some nice big dimensional old growth redwood. So let's see what we find. So we found some wood here. This is redwood, uh, two by 12. Look at the knots in this stuff. This is a really nice wood, looks good, but you can tell that it's newer, it's second growth, third growth redwood. It's blonde, it doesn't have the deep red tans in it. And also these large knots. These knots would kill us for using it. Now this one's even loose as it's dried out here. So now redwood lasts forever. It's really good stuff, but for the quality we're looking for, these knots are unacceptable to us. So we're gonna keep looking around. We're looking for some old wood that's been here a while. Wow, look at this stuff now. To the untrained eye, this is like this old lumber sitting here. Full dimension, this is really thick. This is beautiful redwood. This is what we've been looking for. It's outside the TP burner here. This stuff is probably what they call stump wood. Now, in the old days when they saw these logs, these logs were huge at the base of them. They were so big, they couldn't get a saw all the way through them. So they would actually go up the redwood tree quite a way, sometimes 15, 20 feet off the ground just so they could get their whip saws, the old hand saws, to go through this stuff. Now, that was left out in the wood to stump down from where they cut off the tree. Now, look at this. It's not eight feet long. It's, it's shorter stuff because the stumps weren't that big. But look at that beautiful vertical grain redwood. Nice, deep color. Boy, this is really nice stuff. Now, this is a piece of the same lumber. We've run it through the resaw and cut it down. And then we just want a quick coat of conversion varnish on it just to help bring it out. Look at that. Now we left this rough sawn. You know, we don't want to sand this stuff down. We want it to look just like it did in 1870. This is historically correct. But we did put a finish on it. They probably would have used some kind of oil, something like that on it to uh, 
preserve it, although the redwood would just last forever out there without preservative, but I bet you there was some linseed oil or something on it. So this is just gorgeous stuff. Look at that after just a little bit of stainer conversion varnish on it. It's really wonderful. So we're inside the teepee burner. Sort of cool to look around inside of here. We're sorting through the lumber. Sometimes they put lumber in here to keep it dry out of the wind a little bit. It's really expensive to, you know, to have indoor storage sheds and have everything all covered up. But we're looking for old stuff, stuff that's maybe been abandoned here for a long time. So come over here and look what Ray found. This is really exciting. Ray started digging through here looking for rattlesnakes and great old wood. Look at this. This is old growth redwood, isn't it, Ray? This is an uh, unbelievable find. This is some beautiful old growth redwood we found at this uh, old third generation sawmill. Uh, this is just unbelievably clear, red. I mean, there's, it just, you don't get any cleaner redwood than that. This is a three by 12, and there's nothing, I mean, there's not a knot, there's not a crack, anything. This wood was probably sitting uh, as a stump in the woods for 70 years or more. Um, probably got burned in a couple of fires, and then they, they went up, cut the stump down, and milled it. This one here has a little bit of uh, pattern to it, probably a little wavy grain if you planed it or sanded it, but it's still beautiful solid wood. And then here's another piece that, uh, look at the color in that. Wow, that's beautiful stuff. That's just, it has a lot of tannin in it, makes it red. Um, this stuff is so rare uh, that you have to make sure that you use it uh, every inch of it and make sure that, uh, you know, you're getting your, uh, use out of it because you're not going to find another piece like this. I've been doing woodworking for 30 years and I have uh, never seen a piece of redwood that big, that clear before in my life. Now, the big question, how much is it going to cost? So let's go in the office and see what it's going to cost us. That's the tough part about this, but what a treasure to find. This is really exciting.